you hear this weird noise, here's what I want to show you. It's me, not, it's not me or anything else. It's my dog. Where is he? Emmett, come here, come here. All right, well, my dog, he's behind the, he's panting there. So that's the weird, uh, heavy breathing you hear. <laughs> All right, um, just want to share with you guys today uh, what uh, what we went over with youth last night. And we're going to be in Matthew 6 and, um, sorry, no, Romans 6 and Matthew 28 as well. We're talking about baptism. I just want to share with the kids. It's been a couple of years since um, we talked about baptism, what it symbolizes, the importance of it. Um, and talked about the fears that we have. Um, getting up in front of people and giving our testimony if it's for the first time and and how we can, you know, push that aside and, and trust God uh, through this time. So I'm just going to read Matt, uh, sorry, oh boy, Romans 6, uh, starting at verse 3. Or do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus have been baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him through baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too uh, might walk in the newness of life. For if we have become united with him in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall be, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. And so I just want to share, um, this, yeah, this is from that verse Paul here, talking about, uh, you know, uh, being baptized in his, in, into his death and resurrection. We know with, you know, um, baptism is one of the ordinances that we were, were commanded to do. The other is, you know, communion. And so with baptism, um, you know, it symbolizes uh, Christ's death and resurrection and and also symbolizes our our, our, um, our death to sin and then our uh, resurrection, our, our new life in Christ. And it's, a, it's an outward expression, a public declaration of what's changed in us. We talked with the kids about infant baptism and and um, you know, some the uh, youth leaders share that they were, you know, baptized as a kid, but then they, when they became of the age and um, after they made the decision for Christ, they recognized the, the passages that talk about this, and they were baptized um, the way Christ has asked us to. And we know the verses in, in Matthew 28, uh, 19, 20. It says, uh, "Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit." Teaching them to observe all that I commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And there's more verses too that talk about baptism, and they all talk about first the conversion, right? Becoming a Christian, then being baptized. And we see the importance of that because, um, you know, the reason why we're baptized is because we're telling everybody, we're showing everybody this is a change in us. And that only happens after we've accepted Christ into our life. And, and the importance of that, because we, we, we declare that, that's for, especially for the young kids. Or even for adults who are fearful, but th this is a time when we can uh, publicly stand up and, and say our beliefs and, and say we, we follow Christ. And and by doing that, we you know in the church when we do that publicly, and the port it's important to do it publicly, and to give our you know even for us to give our testimony so people can hear uh, what God has done for us. If we do that publicly, the other brothers and sisters will see that, and they can keep us accountable. We can you know see that yeah you've changed. You're a Christian. And, you know, that, that's something important that we say, and that's, a, that's not a statement we say and just go back to our old life. Um, we're, we're making a very bold statement that um, we're dead to our own self and that we are allowing God to sanctify us. Now, we know we're going to make, you know, baptism does not have any part to do with salvation. It doesn't mean we're perfect. Uh, we're still sinful. Um, but there will be a process of sanctification um, from the moment of conversion and, and after baptism saying that we're giving our lives to Christ and it's important that we stand up and, and share that publicly because we can't do that we can't share our faith to other people we can't you know it's gonna be hard for, for that fear if we allow that fear to get to us um, you know and it only takes a, you know, a couple minutes to, to give our testimony and a couple minutes to be baptized and you know after it's done it's done and we can look at it and go yeah you know that, that's a moment we can be you know be proud with and say yeah I, I did this I publicly said um, what I need to say, I you know, profess Christ to others. Uh, but I didn't keep it hidden in my heart because uh, we know as a life as a Christian, we're supposed to proclaim Jesus Christ. We're supposed to go in Matthew 28, right? Go make disciples of all nations. We, we need to be telling people and our life needs to be different. And so, um, you know, if we, if we have accepted Christ in our life and we, we, you know, we are allowing him to work in us, yeah, that's the next step is to be baptized. Uh, to take the next step of faith and and you know yeah you know i know the young kids were nervous about you know talking the first time and i was sharing like you know i was baptized when i was 11 
if I was getting baptized today for the first time, um, my t it'll be different. I'll be, you know, I'm, I'm used to, you know, I'm older and said my testimony many times, and so it'll be easier. And so we know there's no judgment or there's no no wrong testimony. A lot of kids are saying, oh, I don't, I don't have much of a testimony. That's always the fear. Um, you know, we always want to hear the, 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 you know, the dark and dirty a life of a, of a non-believer. They're becoming a Christian, and, and we think, oh, wow, that's so amazing. God's changed them. But the fact is, every single one of us, before we were saved, are all going to hell. It doesn't matter the sins we're in. We're all sinful, and we have all committed, you know, uh, horrible sins. And our testimony will always be used by God for somebody else. So we don't have to worry that, okay, I don't have to say, you don't know who you're, who's listening. And God will use that uh, for his glory. And so for us to, to push away all the fears, push away the things that we're scared of. I, you know, I hate talking in front of people, always have. And God's taken that away. And it didn't happen overnight. It, it was a process. Um, but I had to I had to stand up and do the things that God asked. And the first few times it didn't go well, but it, over time, right, it's getting better and better. And and God's working through me each day. And so for us, you know what, get up there and do that. Let's profess our faith, take that um, baptism to show God and to show the world that we mean what we say and that we, um, we we we're serious about His commands, that we listen to His commands. And even if it is scary, God's there with us, and He'll help us get through that. And what a blessing, or, you know, for anyone who isn't, and maybe is hesitating right now, what a blessing it's going to be for others to see that. What encouragement, right? We know in Scripture, especially for the adults, right? Older women, older men are supposed to help uh, the younger generation and show them how to lead, how, how to be Christians, how to endure through through uh, struggles. And for adults, you know, who haven't yet, just to get up there and do that um, gives gives that encouragement for the younger people to do it. Right, and to hear that as well, to get up and say, "Yeah, I know this is nervous, but uh, you know, I'm afraid, but I'm still going to do this for God." You know what? Even though I I, I don't like this and enjoy this, it's more important that I do this for God because He commanded it, and because I love what He's done for me and what He did publicly for me. How He took my sins publicly on that cross, He took the shame, He took the the penalty, and He paid for it for me. And you know, for a few minutes of being uncomfortable it's the least we can do for God. And that's going to help us grow in our, in our um, just being able to talk to others and, and, and say that publicly to others, right? The more we stand publicly in front or other people and talk about our testimony and do these things, the more comfortable we feel and the more easier it's going to be to do this uh, year after year and time after time. So I think this, you know, it's important to do this, to publicly say this to God and to other Christians of the faith. But I think it's also a step for us to, you know, that we can trust God and go, hey, you know what, I can do this. And you know what, this is a stepping stone to keep going forward in our walk with God and publicly as well for the people to see. So I just encourage anybody, if you haven't been baptized, um, if there's fear, you know what, talk to us. Um, we'll pray with you, help you get through this. And, you know, this I would promise you, you will never regret doing this. This is something that... Um, nobody ever feels that, oh, I wish I'd never done that. Uh, this is something that really helps and, um, and helps the other believers to come alongside you too as well and, and to love you and care for you. And so it's a commandment. We should do it um, because, you know, what, what God's, the price he's paid, we can pay, you know, it's a lot of suffering for us to do. And, and, you know, the fears, you know, we always know the fears that we have really aren't there when we do it. And so, yeah, I just encourage everybody. Um, let's, you know. Do what the Lord asks, and and let's stand up and, and share our faith, and be some you know be something we can share to other non-believers of what we're doing and what we've done, and the the purpose by it, and to share that hope and share that joy that we have because of Christ. Okay, I want to close off. I'm getting too long here, but uh, hope everyone's doing well, and hopefully soon um, we can see each other. Um, so I just hope everyone, everyone's okay. But um, if you need an ear, just give us a ring, give us any time, and we'll be happy just to talk or even be able to meet if uh, if need be. Okay, everyone, take care.